When I think of high-end home theater projectors, there are certain common characteristics that spring to mind, such as them being large, such as them being expensive and obtrusive and inconvenient, such as them having bulbs and bulb life or lasers that can get very hot and therefore there's fan noise to think about. And probably if you're new to home theater projectors, the worst one would be the complicated, how complicated it can be to set them up with a screen within a room. And then when I think about a technology development such as a projector being the world's first to offer Dolby Vision, well then, of course, it has to have all of those common characteristics and be expensive. You know, if it was from a, one of the key big manufacturers, I'm sure that projector would be 10,000 pounds or more. So it's very, very refreshing to sit here with a product like this, which looks absolutely nothing like a traditional home theater projector. I mean, you can't even see the lens for starters. And this is the Hajime Horizon Ultra. And this very compact, high-end home theater projector is packing some serious technology and some really serious performance for a very reasonable price of £1,749 or $1,699. So that's still a chunk of money, but it's very reasonable price, reasonably priced for high-end home theater projection. But I know what it's like when you're used to a high-end home theater projector having all of those common characteristics. You might see something like this and dismiss it as not being a high, you know, a genuine high-performance projector. <laughs> but let me assure you or ask you, do not judge a book by its cover because I've been testing this projector on a four meter screen in a pitch black room and I've been amazed by the image quality this, this can produce, the brightness, the pop, the, the punch of the image, but also the clarity and the color quality, the black levels and more. So yeah, this is a real high performance projector coming from this very small, nice looking form factor. And because of that, I actually genuinely think this is a real game changer product. That's a big statement to make, one that's used a lot and often not quantified. But throughout this review, I think you'll see why I think this is a genuine game changer product. And I want to start with my first impressions because this is the first Hajimi product that I have ever seen. And the overall packaging quality, not just the lovely white box I'm showing you now, but the outer brown cardboard box and the air protection system that was in that box was far better than I was expecting to see. And this is a retail sample that was shipped to me from Amazon UK Logistics. So it's not a cherry pick review sample. This will be how you receive it too. Then removing the lid of the lovely white box and seeing the Horizon Ultra for the first time, I was super impressed with the styling. The color Hajime say is misty gold. It definitely looks gold from some angles. Maybe some could see it as beige from another, but overall it's very nice and I like the styling and overall design. And I can see this styling fitting very nicely much nicer and easier fitting into very modern living room situations because you could have this sat on a table in somewhere in the living room or even probably better, more disguised would be to have this on some kind of, you know, bookshelf up there behind you with some fake plants around it. And, you know, if you couldn't see maybe the depth of this, you could look at it and think, yeah, it's just one of those moderns, a modern type of smart speaker. Yeah. So that's really, really cool, right? You see, it's totally different, totally different to, you know, I've never seen a modern high-end home theater projector like it. And for its size, dimensions don't really mean much to me. So I thought I would show you its footprint than an iPad Pro 12.9 inch in a case. So that's very compact. The height is more than a standard can of fizzy drink or pop if you're from the north of the UK. But if you don't drink this type of boring beverage, well then this drink, I'm sure you will all recognize and be able to size reference against. So again, the Horizon Ultra is a very compact unit that your significant other would have a hard time saying no to. And also in the box, you have a nice quality remote control, a very sizable power brick that's also misty gold in color and a misty gold color matching power cable. But I do have one niggle with the power brick. And yes, it is very sizable, really only by compared to the small compact form factor of the projector. And I'm fine with that because this being this size probably means the projector can be as small as it is. So I'm fine with that. But my niggle here is really with the the attached cable because it's really not very long. And being so compact, this projector and the way it's built means it's really very flexible for its installation or how you would use it. And I just found this cable to be a little bit too short 
and sometimes it felt like it was, yeah, I could have done with a bit more cable length here. So it might just be my personal use case situation, but you know, maybe another meter on the cable I think would be better. And I also think a lock-in power connector would be better just in case this cable then gets tugged for whatever reason, you know, this would always stay secure. On the rear are an impressive number of connections given the small form factor. There are two USB ports and two HDMI ports, one supporting EARC. They are only HDMI 2.0, which does make sense, of course, for a 4K projector, but gaming enthusiasts might feel a little short-changed. But really, you shouldn't, because Hajime saying that in the game mode, this projector has a lag of only 18 milliseconds, which seems really very good to me for a projector, but I'm not a gaming enthusiast, so you, know, you, you take that information you know, as, as you personally do. There is also an optical output for an alternative digital audio out, and interestingly, a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, and I've definitely never seen that on a projector before. Above the connections are what looks like heat sinks, and I'm not sure if they are, but the holes are heat vents, and you do feel warm air coming out of them. So you'll definitely want to allow some clearance at the rear of the projector for that heat to exhaust away. The Horizon Ultra offers Wi-Fi 6 dual band internet and Bluetooth 5.2. So you could have an ultra huge big screen TV or movie theater experience while listening to the sound, through headphones. And something like that seems really, really trivial, but these are obviously wireless headphones as well. Something like that seems really trivial, but in my life, I've got young children. That would be amazing for me because I could still enjoy my projector, my huge screen, but sound could be, you know, straight to my headphones. You know, I could watch it late at night without upsetting the wife and the kids. So that you know, seems trivial, but it's actually quite a huge deal. But the real excitement for me comes when you turn the Horizon Ultra on and the front slides down to reveal the lens. How cool is that on a projector of this price? And just as exciting is the main specification. The Horizon Ultra is a DLP 4K resolution projector that uses a dual light engine. Hajimi have combined a laser light source with an LED light source. They say it's to give the best of everything without the compromises each light source offers. So high brightness, wide color gamut, 99.9% .9 of Rec. 709 and 95.5% of DCI-P3 with a long 25,000 hour lifespan. And this projector is extremely bright with a rated 2300 lumens from this tiny package. That is crazy impressive. And this all comes for a very high quality lens system that you can just see it's high quality from the image the projector produces because it's extremely clean and sharp. The Horizon Ultra has a bionic variable iris for adjusting the brightness to improve contrast and an automatic optical zoom system so you can adjust the image size without losing quality. All excellent technologies at this price point. And there are a whole abundance of automated picture adjustment technologies built in for us sorting out things like focus and keystone and all of these other things, which are very impressive and interesting. But for me, they would mean nothing unless the picture quality, the genuine home theater picture quality was there. And so that is what I actually want to talk about first. Testing the Horizon Ultra, I don't have ideal conditions at home, so I spent a week at Reference Audio, who are a high-end, hi-fi and AV dealership based in Whittam, Essex. And they have a dedicated home theatre demo room they allowed me to use that has a four meter screen. And for those of you who don't know how big a four meter screen is, hopefully this can give you some idea. And in situ, they also have an excellent Sony 4K laser projector that costs around 15,000 pounds. So I was able to use it to get some kind of picture quality benchmark. And for starters is the challenge of filling a four meter screen with light. And especially doing that with any kind of quality and with the kind of quality that would do justice to HDR content, HDR10, HLG, and especially Dolby Vision. And of course, I thought the 2300 watt lumen output should be enough, 
But it's such a small projector, I really wasn't sure whether it would be enough, but it very much was. And actually the image could have gone quite bigger. I think the rated maximum size is up to about five meters. And that's a very, very big screen. So again, extremely impressive. And the image from the Horizon Ultra is ultra bright. See what I did there. And it's punchy for its brightness impact or overall dynamic contrast when it needs to be without bleaching the overall image or raising the overall black level too much. And I did find a nice compromise of manually controlling the iris to improve the contrast for SDR content, but then using the bright mode for HDR content. And that worked great for adding more image pop and dynamism, especially with Dolby Vision but that might not be needed on a smaller screen. So I appreciated the options to adjust this. And comparing to the much more expensive Sony laser projector, which was a little further away from the screen, maybe six meters compared to five and a half meters, the little Hajime was more than holding its own for the overall image brightness. And I would say that the Sony definitely had a bit more image contrast and subtlety to it which was definitely impressive, but the Jimmy probably had a bit more vivid image punch going on. So either way, the impressive part was the very, very small, very affordable Hajime was holding its own with the very large, very expensive Sony for image pop and brightness and impact holding its own. And that's a massive achievement. Black levels were a little different though. The four meter 16 by nine screen, when you're watching content with black bars top and bottom, kind of shows you some indication of the black level performance of the projector. And here, the Ajimi was excellent. I would say it was excellent for a DLP projector and extra excellent for a projector at this price point. And I would say very respectable for a projector full stop. But comparing to the Sony, you could see that the Sony had a better black level and that meant that the images on the screen had a bit more color contrast and just contrast to them too. So this, the images were a bit more solid on the screen and just a little bit more of a, like a, a deeper richness to them. But we're not talking like an obvious night and day difference here. So again, the tiny little Ujimi, the very affordable tiny little Ujimi was holding its own with the much bigger, much more expensive Sony. And the next thing that impressed me was the clarity of the image. And when you're looking at video images this big, you can see everything for the production value. Some content is very good and very clean. Others is very grainy. That sometimes that's by design. The Hajimi has a very clean look with a great natural sharpness. Yes, it looks massively over sharpened out of the box or in the wrong picture setting, but you can reduce the digital sharpness and the image doesn't go soft. And I think a great example of this would be with these two relatively modern movies. You have Mission Impossible Fallout and Transformers Last Night. And Mission Impossible, especially early on, it looks super grungy. It's really noisy and really grungy, of course, by design. Whereas Transformers Last Night has this very clean cut look throughout the whole movie. You know, Michael Bay clean cut look. So the Hajime projector was easily able to show me the very obvious stark design choice differences between these two movies. Of course, it could show you much more than that, but you know, it's just, this is just this kind of comparison. It just stood out to me. It's like, oh wow, you can really, really see that this, the, the director's intent, I suppose, in the look and the feel then of these two particular movies. For color quality, it's very easy to put the Horizon Ultra into the wrong mode. Warm is very warm with a very obvious orange red push. And for me, this projector warrants a calibration. It's good enough to be worth the cost of that. And there are some basic white balance controls and color correction options in the menu, but this is something that could definitely be improved. But professional calibration is not something that I did for this review. So I set the projector up really just by eye. And of course I know that is not perfect, but I do have some kind of color experience from all of the video, video editing work that I do. So I was easily, relatively easy, able to get some very nice images from the projector just from eye and just from kind of tinkering with the menus and making that judgment. Now color quality, of course, is measurable and quantifiable, but I think, Color preference can still be very subjective. And comparing to the Sony, I think the Sony probably had slightly better colors. Just, I think probably because the black level and how that makes the image just a little bit more sumptuous. But again, we're not talking a night and day difference here. I was really happy and really impressed with the color quality of the Ajimi, watching my own content on YouTube, watching, you know, John Darko's content on YouTube. I know how that looks. I know how that's been mastered, especially my own content. I know how that's been mastered. But also watching 
you know, non Dolby Vision content like the shallows. I was really impressed with the green trees and then the blue sea and then the red blood in the blue sea. I was really impressed by that, really impressed by the colors in Lucy and whole other host of content that I watched. And there is an option in the menu for higher color accuracy, which seems to get the colors and everything to a very nice place with just the press of a button. That would be great for many people, but of course, different screens and room conditions will require something different. So I appreciated the level of adjustment and controls that are available. Motion and movement was also very good from the Horizon Ultra. Maybe not quite as good in movie content as the Sony is when you use Sony's, I think it's called True Cinema Motion Mode. That just adds a little bit of extra smoothness. But turn that off and then the Jimmy was holding its own again with the much more expensive Sony. Now in the menu system, there is a motion compensation option and you can put that weak, medium and strong. I personally don't like those modes, especially with movie content, because I think it just adds a little bit too much. But maybe with TV content, or maybe if you just prefer that kind of ultra smooth motion, it seems like the implementation here was done very well because I didn't really notice any artifacts or weirdness going on. I just noticed, to me at least, the non-normal, normal motion, or whichever way around that would be. But what is Dolby Vision? How much does it add for picture quality? Well, what you perceive as a benefit will very much depend on how the content is made because Dolby Vision offers a number of technical advantages and for projection, these are very cool because it's an end-to-end -end dynamic HDR where the display is able to tone map the image frame by frame in line with how the creator or Dolby intended for the display's maximum brightness capability. And of course, this is great for projectors because they often fall very short of the 1000 nits kind of maximum brightness capability of HDR content and therefore tone mapping has to be applied so the image isn't blown out in certain areas. And that is something that I've seen quite a lot on projectors where you have big areas of blown out image where it's just too bright and the projector can't display the information. It just becomes like a solid flat color and I've seen that a lot on projectors and that's because the tone mapping hasn't brought that brightness down to retain the detail. So that's what's really interesting I think with projectors about Dolby Vision is you still get this, this blown out aspect on TVs to some degree but when that image is much smaller I think it has a lesser impact on you. When you're looking at a giant screen, when you have a big area of that screen that's just kind of like a flat white color or similar, I find it very distracting. So having a very clever advanced de facto modern really standard dynamic tone mapping system in a projector I think is a huge development. And it amazes me that we haven't seen this before. It amazes me that, that the Hijimi Horizon Ultra is the first. So to me, that's another, you know, great, great achievement. And I watch loads of Dolby Vision content through the Hijimi, and it's not possible to engage and disengage Dolby Vision to see what it is and isn't doing. Whenever you play Dolby Vision content, you see it come up in the top right hand corner and that's just it, it's Dolby Vision all the way. But there are two different picture modes, one for a light room and one for a dark room, which do a very good job actually of giving you a great image. But there is also a custom mode, so you can make some adjustments. And I really appreciated that because I found I preferred some adjustments to streamed content. So for me, watching Dolby Vision content from a disc, I was more than happy with the Dolby Vision Dark, mo dark room mode that was built into the projector. But when I was watching content maybe from Amazon or Disney Plus that was Dolby Vision, I just I just wanted to play a little bit, fiddle a little bit and just boost the image for its contrast, boost the image for its color, just a little bit, purely personal preference. So again, I just enjoyed and appreciated having the options to do so. But when it comes to like the best image that I saw from the Hajimi projector, it was definitely 4K UHD disc in Dolby Vision. And one disc that absolutely amazed me through this projector was Aquaman. Now, of course, this has got exceptional picture and an exceptional soundtrack as well. But the Dolby Vision grade through this projector, I have to say, it looked amazing. It was a real spectacle to look at and watch on a four meter screen. And you have a wonderful combination of lovely clean images some grungy images and color, really rich and popping vibrant colors in the grade of this movie. And I would say, the Aquaman on the Jimmy Horizon Ultra on the four meter screen at Reference Audio has been some of the best projected image I've ever seen. And that's, that's really something when you think about it. This is a, a sub 2K cost projector. It's really, really an achievement. 
The second best image that I saw through the Hajime was definitely 4K UHD discs, not Dolby Vision content, such as Black Hawk Down. That looked really amazing through this projector, really quite grungy by design, but amazing. Lucy looked particularly special, as did you know a whole number of other movies that I tested. And then I would say next best after that would be Dolby Vision content streamed. So something like, you know, Avatar Way of the Water. The quality is not as good as disc, but still very, very impressive. And the Hijimi has its own streaming service platform built in that's running on Android TV 11. So that means you have access to thousands of apps available through the Google Play Store. And I installed just a few basic ones like YouTube, Disney Plus, Tidal, and with a workaround, Netflix. The streaming aspect of the Horizon Ultra is not my favorite part. It was a little clunky and quirky in operation. YouTube worked very well, actually. I really enjoyed the experience of watching YouTube. And Amazon was okay, Disney was okay, and Netflix was not so good. When I was watching maybe Amazon or Disney, when I would try and access the projector menu, just felt slow and sluggish, because normally it's kind of razor sharp and razor fast. Now, that wasn't happening through YouTube, only seemingly through Amazon, Disney, and Netflix. So there's something maybe interesting going on there. One major advantage the Horizon Ultra has over other high-end home theater projectors is practicality. It's small and very quiet. I could barely hear its fan noise with the projector inches from my head, compared to the Sony, which was a meter or more away, its fan noise was much, much louder. It's also pretty much instant on and instant off. And if you look underneath, the Horizon Ultra has a quarter inch, I think, thread. So I could use one on one of my video light stands with a ball head for moving it around and aligning the image. Now this was not a brilliantly stable solution, but it was quick, easy, and a mobile one, ideal for testing the advanced auto features. And first was autofocus, and that worked as you would expect. Second was auto keystone, which aligns the image when the projector is off center and would normally angle distort the image. The Horizon Ultra will apply auto focus, auto keystone, and auto alignment. So in a few seconds, an unwatchable image is now a very watchable image. And you can see from my test video, it works perfectly well and is very cool. I have never seen anything like it. So you could legitimately have this projector in a non-traditional position. Like you don't need to have it bang in the center of the wall or the screen. You could have it down to the side. You could have it you know, off to the side and you would still get a very watchable, perfect really in a way, watchable image. And that's a major technological, technology, real world use case advantage. And next I tested the intelligent obstacle avoidance by placing a broom up against the screen. And as you can see, the projector auto corrects, auto keystones, auto focuses, and auto aligns the image to avoid the obstacle, which is again, really, really impressive. And then I tested auto eye protection, which dims the image when eyes are detected in front. And that worked perfectly well. And this could be brilliant if you have young children in the home, because as soon as you tell them, don't look at that bright light, that's the first thing they're going to do. Lastly, I tested the intelligent wall color adaption. And this corrects the color of the image if the wall you're shining on is not perfectly white. So I found a magnolia wall, ran the adaption, and bang, you can see it auto fixed the color to make it much more accurate. So all of these technologies can make your life much, much easier, and they take away a lot of the complexities and inconvenience of home theater projectors. And I was really quite amazed by how well all of these you know, auto features worked. But I was also very, very happy to see that you can turn all of these functions off and you can still, in a, you know, if you're stuck in your ways like I am, still put the projector in the perfect position, focus it yourself, keystone correct it manually and do all of the things that you assume you have to do with high-end you know, high-end home theater projection. But when you actually think about it, doing all of these things manually, yes, there is something gratifying in that process, making sure everything's perfect, but it's actually not modern. It's actually old-fashioned. It's old-fashioned to have to do it when you think about it. But when you're stuck in your ways like I am, of course, I appreciate it. And lastly, I need to talk about sound quality. And it feels very, very weird to talk about the sound quality of a high-end home theater projector. But the Harman Kardon badge on the front should give you some idea that sound has been thought about here. 
And there are several different sound modes. I thought cinema sounded the best, but maybe on a bookshelf or a more enclosed placement, a different mode would sound better. And I was massively impressed with the sound quality of the projector because when I was sitting, you know, with the projector just inches behind my head, when I wasn't thinking about it, the sound sounded like it was coming from the front of the room, from the screen. And it's amazing how your brain kind of tricks you into kind of believing these things. So that was very impressive. And the Horizon Octa plays very, very loud. I mean, it's only rated to have 12 watts, I think, per channel, but actually it plays very loud, clean, and without distortion. But of course, this is not intended to replace a very good sound bar or a good home theater package. Of course it's not, and it wouldn't do that, but it kind of competes with good quality TV sound. So maybe in some situations, that's all you would want, and that's all you would need. And like I said, I've been you know, very, very impressed with how clean, how loud, and detailed actually and spacious and soundstage. I was getting like a sounds over here and sounds over here with the projector behind my head. Very, very impressive stuff. So, so far this review has been a lot of praise and not too many negatives, but of course the Horizon Ultra is not perfect. I think the menu system could be much easier to navigate around. Sometimes it felt like you've got to go very deep into the menu to make the adjustments that you want. The remote control is very, very lovely and I love the way you kind of pop the batteries out. I think that's really cool. Let's see if I show you that again. <laughs> you pop the batteries out. That's really cool. But the button tactile feel, maybe it's because I didn't have enough time to fully get used to it, but I found myself kind of fumbling sometimes and pressing the Google you know, speak assist button when I was intended to press the settings button. So yeah, the tactile feel of all of this could definitely be improved, but you know, it's a very, very lovely remote control. Then I mentioned the power brick, and then I mentioned the streaming services not being my favorite part of the projector's experience. And one thing that I think could be massively useful here would be some user presets where you can set your settings manually and save them to a user preset. Because I liked different settings for YouTube, I like different settings for Dolby Vision content. And sometimes the auto change between all of this just didn't seem to work quite right. So it'd be lovely to just have preset one for YouTube, preset two for you know UHD content and so on. So there's definitely room to grow here. There's definitely room for improvement here as an overall product. But when I think about the price, 1,749 pounds, for the raw projector performance, the brightness, the colors, the contrast, the raw, what, you know, what this really is intended to do, right? Intended to be a projector. When I think about that, with all of the extra flexibilities and technologies built in, oh God, I'm so impressed. I have been so impressed with this projector and I really was not expecting to be anywhere near as impressed as I have been. And that to me is why I feel like this is legitimately a genuine, game changer product. It's gonna be a game changer for so many home theater enthusiasts. And the reason why I say that is because I've been into a number of people's homes and they want the home theater big screen experience. And to get that big screen experience, they have to have a big projector with all of the characteristics that I mentioned at the beginning. And sometimes that can be so obtrusive in their living space that I've even hit my head on a number of them. And that's <laughs> saying something when you're as short as I am. So, but they've had to have this big projector because there's really been no alternative. Well, now there is an alternative. There's a small, compact projector that gives up nothing, absolutely nothing in terms of performance, projector, picture, quality, performance, and actually adds extra features, not just the auto correction features, but Dolby Vision support for a very, very reasonable price. That to me, is the definition of a game changer product, something that's going to change people's lives, and give them something that they want from a package that they've never been able to get that from before. And then that extends into real life, real people's homes, people that maybe have TVs, but would love the big screen cinema performance, but they can't get away with having a massive giant box hanging from their ceiling. Now they can have a projector hidden up on a shelf or on a table that looks like a smart speaker, and they can have a whacking great big five meter, if they want, projected image for a big movie night experience, and then have the sound for the headphones so they don't upset anybody in the home. That is really, really impressive especially when we're talking about the picture quality and overall performance this delivers at a price. So yeah, I have to end this review 
with a massive applause for Hajimi. Wow, what a product. What, what a first impression it's made on me. I, I, you know, and I think there'll be people that watch this video and they'll look at this and they'll think, yeah, I don't believe it. I don't believe it because I partly don't believe it either. And I've spent a week mesmerized by it. But yeah, you think what you want, everything in this video, everything I've said is 100% true. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoy my take on reviewing, it's normally it's hi-fi, but this time it's a video projector. If you enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel and you know hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video.